My dear friends, can we please stand as we begin? My friends, bless be God. He is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and He is a gentle Father. He is a God of all consolation. It is He who comforts all of us in our sorrow so that we may offer others in their sorrow the consolation we've received from God ourselves. Our brother George, like all of us, was baptized with Christ in waters of baptism. It is our prayer and our hope that he will now share the vision and the glory of Christ's resurrection. We have our entrance song, How Great Thou Art. my soul, 
my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. Thou art, how great Thou art. My friends, I invite you to please sit as we listen to the tributes. Hello, good morning all. My sincere condolences to the Depinas family. I am John Quinton, Uncle George's godson. The tribute that I will make will be done in two voices. The first would be my dad, and then the second would be my mom, Charles Quinton and Yvonne Quinton. Sometime in September of 1956, I had to leave quarantine, Burbies in rural Guyana to attend secondary school in Georgetown. Neither my mom nor I could find at the time, identified relatives or friends in Georgetown with whom to make contact. Consequently, my mother, having been advised by the Catholic Church in Burbies that there would have been room for me at the Catholic Youth Organization, which will be referred to as CYO in Georgetown, she made the required arrangements for my accommodation there. Having not also learned that George DePina was a senior in the club, and a resident there, she inquired from him whether she would be able to help find a way around my new home and Georgetown. George agreed. He took my bags and guided me to the location he advised would be my reserve. George next took my mother and me to someone who he recommended as the best person to take care of my meals and laundry. Her name was Mama West. From that day in September 1956, George de Pina and Mama West, apart from my parents, became the most important persons in my life until I met a young woman from Campbellville, which was then considered an outskirt of the city. Mama West has since died, but George had continued to be the big brother in my life. It was not long after I was placed in the care of George that I met Leela whose brothers were among the foundation members of the CYO, and Leela was a regular guest at the club functions. Time and developments in our lives required that George and I found the better homes than the club. George got married and, has, and was living in Craig Street, Campbellville, the same area I considered an outskirt of the city, and in the same street that the young woman who had become very important to me lived and whose home I had been visiting shortly after my arrival in Georgetown. That young, that young woman became my wife in 1961, and she will continue the account. So the, the next account will be my mom, Yvonne. Meeting George for the first time more than six, six decades ago, I thought of him as just a nice young man, handsome and very popular, especially with the ladies. As time went on, I came to realize he was much more than just nice. I recognized that he had some outstanding qualities. One of these was a disposition that was serious beyond his years. George was also a responsible young man. An example of this trait is, once at the party at CYO, there were a few of his female friends vying for his attention. As the party was approaching the end, this responsible young man knew he had to make sure that each of these three or four young ladies got home safely. After arranging with them, number one, he got compliant friends to take the others home while he got violently sick and had to retire upstairs. He got well immediately after the air had settled and came down to take the number one left behind. George was also kind and generous. One, on one occasion, after spending some time with Lila and his family, 
In Trinidad, George took me to the airport. On our way, he asked if I had paid the airport tax. I said yes, but made no attempt to hand over the information. George left and came back a short while after, handing me my passport and boarding pass, saying, you're good to go. I said thanks, hugged and kissed him, and we said goodbye. It was not until I was well on my way back to Guyana that it occurred to me that I did not hand over the payment for the airport tax to my kind friend. I was both embarrassed and touched by George's kind and thoughtful gesture. George was also funny and had an acute sense of humor. Charles and I enjoyed being in this couple's company. In September, 60 years ago, their marriage preceded ours by three months. Our two sets of children attended the same school. They were like siblings and even now are close. Our oldest and youngest are godchildren of the Dipinas. One of our more pleasant and memorable re recollections of George is his pleasant surprise when we unexpectedly turned up at his 80th birthday five years ago. Sadly, it turned out to be our very last, albeit memorable and pleasant visit with George. Ken, Andre, Chavane, your dad has been called to higher service, but we know the memories will live on. Be sad, but try to be happy when you think of him. Leela, our hearts go out to you. We as Catholics believe in the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Please believe you will meet with your George again someplace. May God bless you all and may George's soul rest in peace. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I am George's grandson, Rashad. Um, my grandfather was, is a, a very great man. Um, all I can ever remember from as young as I can remember is hearing the high praises everyone spoke of my grandfather in. Uh, the high praises people continue to speak of my grandfather in and I truly believe that to be a testament of his character. I believe one of the most important concepts within the human experience is legacy. Legacy is something that you create, it is something that you build, and most importantly it's something that outlives you. Um, and between my mother, my Uncle Andre, my Uncle Ken, my cousins, myself, the people that my grandfather has touched, I believe that even though he may be gone to us now, that there is still a piece of him within all of us in the ways that he has taught us and showed us the way. Um, there are going to be a lot of things that I miss about Grandpa. Um, he always had something to say about my hair um, between the mohawks and the fades. And I recently got both of my ears pierced and them braided. And I genuinely wish I could hear how he'd react to that. Um, but I think that even with him gone, there's still a path to follow. And I think that for what anyone might aspire to be, I think that Grandpa set a pretty good path for anyone to walk along. Hi, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Andre Dupina. 
I'm um, one of George's sons, and I'm going to do two tributes. One on behalf of myself and my family, and the extended Dipino family. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do one that has been shared with us by one of his other godsons, uh, Andrew Saul, on behalf of the Saul and Stephen family. The first one goes to the Dipina family, distinguished guests, and those watching live stream. I wanted to share a couple of personal memories that came to mind when I was informed George Dipina, my godfather, had passed. At that moment, my mind raced as I recalled as a young boy growing up in Guyana, this tall man who had a laugh that filled the room and a smile as equal. I recalled one day long ago, this man leading a crowd of men and women, waving flags, singing songs, and banging on drums along Hatfield Street. I did not know about public service. I did not know public service was noble and necessary. Now, as an aging man myself, I reflect on that, and that Uncle George, Uncle George served with integrity and held true to the important values like faith and family. He strongly believed that it was important to give back to the community and county in which he lived. I believe he recognized that serving others enriched his soul. Uncle George had an enormous capacity to give, him, to give of himself. He was a mentor and father figure to me and many. <clears throat> he taught many that a day was not meant to be wasted. He, on he honored and nurtured his many friendships with his generous and giving soul. I once heard it said of man that the idea is to die young as late as possible. So I close with a heavy heart, but I know that this man, George Epina, lived a wonderful life, a legendary life, a courageous life, and I will miss him so. On behalf of the Steeman and Saul family, God's name. My contribution is, um, again, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the entire Dipino family, thank you for joining us today, both in person and virtually, as we lay my dad to rest and send him out on his final farewell journey. George Ignatius de Pina, better note to you, to some of you, especially within the labor community, as Brother George or Comrade George, and to others simply as just George. And of course, to us, his direct and indirect family, as our loving father, uncle, dad, grandfather, and husband. As so eloquently written in a tribute to him by the Caribbean Congress of Labor, my dad was truly a Caribbean man. This was so even before he ventured into trade unionism, as his name and athletic achievements were well known in the world of athletics, both in his native Guyana and throughout the Caribbean. As dad would say, being an athlete is something he happened into because he was not as gifted as in football and cricket among his peers, especially in his CYO days. Although as part of my research, I recently found out that from as young as 11, he was winning school and neighborhood one mile events in the Georgetown area. So he had a gift that he had not yet seen, but manifested itself to others who were looking on. But as we see throughout his life, just happening into things and going along for the ride just wasn't in my dad's DNA. His venture into athletics led to his participation in the Pan American, Commonwealth, and the now defunct West Indian Track and Field Championships. And of course, the pinnacle of his athletic career, his participation as one of Guyana's representatives in the 1960 Rome Olympics. Along the way, he set national records in the 5,000 meters and the 10,000 meters. 
with a 10,000 meters record standing for 53 years, nine months, and 29 days before being broken on June the 21st, 2013. He also ventured into cross-country running with competitive bat battles with the likes of legendary Harry Powell and the barefooted Moses Dwarker, and stories of which we know nothing about in person, but, if we, but we have heard from many a time and people. It also extended track battles of historic proportions in Georgetown with the Canadian Doug Kyle in the late 1950s. These outstanding achievements, over the, especially over the 1950s, led to his selection of Sportsman of the Year on a joint basis with Ian MacDonald in the year 1957. His transition from athletics to trade unionism in 1961 and 1962 allowed him to contribute even more significantly to a much wider community, that is the Caribbean community. He brought to his new career, specifically as the, in the role of General Secretary at the Clerical and Commercial Workers Union, better known as the CCW, a strong commitment to workers' rights and the need for workers to be at the table as part and parcel of the decision-making process. In this role, he was able to strike the perfect balance between that stereotypical trade union milita militarism and professional diplomacy, and was able to adjust his self, demeanor, and communication on that sliding scale, depending on who sat across the table from him. Together with his colleague Gordon Todd and other leadership colleagues of the union, he was able to make the CCW a strong national union, truly representing union members across the economic, social, and economic divides. On reflection, we can think of his time spent at the CCW as really his learning period and his apprenticeship for the greater contribution he was to make to the Caribbean region in his role at the International Labor Organization, enhancing workers' education and regional trade union advancement and unity for 22 years. Even after retirement, he continued to provide leadership and guidance to the labor community as the General Secretary of the Caribbean Congress of Labor, and in various advisory capacities to labor leaders throughout the Caribbean region. Not to be one who can sit idly by after retiring from the Caribbean Congress of Leaders so effectively for a second time, he lent his skills, leadership abilities, to become the chairperson of the National Center for Persons with Disabilities in Trinidad and Tobago. And as if that was not enough, he then became the street representative for his neighborhood residence association and trusted advisor of many. With all of those accomplishments, you would think that he would have achieved as full a life as possible. But that didn't make his life full. What made his life full were a few other things. One, as a husband, father, grandfather to all of us. His love, his dedication, his mission in life to make our lives a whole lot better than his was, was paramount in his mind. But he didn't limit it just to us. He extended that care and commitment to anyone he ran into. It is very emotionally touching. You know, from time to time, with his passing, the stories that we've heard, the things that he has done to help people, things that we, don't, we never knew about, um, tells you the kind of person that he is. On a personal level, I've run into, I've told this story to those who are close to me, I've run into a pharmacist um, living out in Canada who told me the only reason he's a pharmacist today because during my dad's tenure at the CCW, he led the establishment of a scholarship program 
so that members of the union's children had the opportunity to further their education. And this young man that I met was the first recipient. Stories like that abound, you know, some, some of our friends who talk about his, my dad's representation of them in, you know, union management disputes are far and many. As an individual, dad, you lived a great life. We will certainly miss you. We love you endlessly, and no amount of words could put that into place. But at the end of the day, you are on to a bigger and better athletic track, labor organization, and you are forming part and parcel of that welcoming committee for us, as we all have to make this journey transitioning from life on earth to life beyond. In closing, as we say our final farewell to you, we know you have, as Rochard said, what you have done on earth is going to live beyond your life because you have left a legacy. It's a legacy that we honestly can't live up to, but we will cherish and maintain as much as we can. So in going, in sending you off, we don't want to look at this as a sad moment. It is sad for us, but this really is a celebration of your life, the contribution you have made to it, and the fact that the world has been better for the time you have spent here with us. So rest in peace, rise in power, and because the world needs more men like you, I'm going to borrow from one of the, the, the tributes paid online from um, Andre Walker. Because the world needs more men like you, return if possible. And in closing, let's call that George. Good morning to all who are present here physically or via the streaming. I'm Kenneth, and the eldest child of the Dipina clan. Child sounds like a funny word, you know, when you see a gray-headed man and a gray-bearded man. <laughs> you, will <clears throat> you will actually see that sport in a bear just like me. I am so almost as old as him that people sometimes ask me, Ken, is that your brother? <laughs> I want to thank you all for your presence and kind words and of consolation and solace. And I want to say thank you. 45 years ago, on a flight from Guyana to Trinidad, I cried all the way from the beginning to the end of the journey because I was leaving behind a life that I'd come to know and people whom I loved. Today, you may or may not see my tears, but my heart is crying because someone whom I love is departing. That is my dad, George Ignatius de Pina. Today would be the last time I'm seeing him. There will be no words to share, no more ideas to talk about, no more suggestions to receive, no more guidance, no more embrace, no more presence. George DePina will be gone, but not from my heart and my mind. All I have will be 
continuing memories of his expression of love for me and the rest of the family. I'm here today because of my dad, and now I'm here, now that I'm here, he's not here. But that is how life goes, literally as well as figuratively. One moment you're here, the next moment you're gone. And I remember the last time I saw him in the hospital, I started hoping that he would last for at least another day. But he didn't even made it, make it through the night. That night was the 25th of July. And I was finding it hard to sleep. I eventually went to sleep thinking about him and thinking, I will have to tell those doctors something the next morning even though they were not the easiest people to reach and to convince. But then I got a call from the hospital very early the next morning from one of the nurses telling me she was sorry and that that had passed on the 26th day of July at 4.26. You know, after seeing his condition for days, I was expecting to hear a call like that for a while, but still didn't want to expect it. But it was still hard to believe. To me, it is and was unbelievable. I didn't want to believe it, but it was true. And the story of the life of George Ignatius de Pina was concluded. Well, as you may know, or may have gathered, we, the family, are in this country because of Dad. And now we have become many things. Growth has happened, and branches have grown. And I'm extremely grateful to Dad for the effort he made to make us happy by providing all the necessary needs and wants of life for us as individuals, as well as a family even up to this time. Whatever I will say here cannot and will not be able to sufficiently sum up the life of Dad. His life really is a life to be celebrated. And I think that is what Brother was saying to me the other morning. It will be a celebration, yesterday actually. As the saying goes, he was a self-made man. He started life from a very humble beginning with a rich outlook and true effort, grit and determination and natural talent. He made a life that was to benefit not only himself but his future family. He was a shoemaker's son, but that didn't mean that he had the best shoes. But he walked and ran long distances all over the world and represented his home country and ended up his career as an elite athlete in the 1960 Rome Olympics, representing and making his family and country very proud. Even before he made his abode here in Trinidad, he was running at the Southern Games at the Gaukar Park. And the Tin Man, as he was called, at one time, or one night time known as the Tin Man, was giving the Trinis some real pressure. <laughs> I could just imagine if he was in his prime, like in those days, what would have happened today. And all that was accomplished with the meagerness of resources at his disposal. He once told me, you know, my first long pants was my father's pants, you know. But that didn't stop him from traveling the world and meeting prime ministers and presidents. After his stint as a, a, a distinguished champion athlete, he became a champion and a voice and an educator for workers and workers' rights in Guyana and subsequently throughout the region, spanning the English, Dutch, and Spanish-speaking uh, countries in the West Indies through the medium of UE, ILO, CIVIS, and CLC, CCL. 
starting from his athletic days on through his ILO, CVs, and CL, CCL days, we used to say, this man really living in a suitcase, you know? He would arrive home one day and be gone again tomorrow. And that is how he used to, how it used to be, how he used to be operating. He gave his life and was dedicated to anything he decided to put his hand to. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in Sheol, where you go. Sheol refers to the grave. And I think this is what Dad did in, his, in this regard, especially when it came to his work, and may I add, when it came to his play. And this catapulted him into high places among other places. The family is based on two towers, one being Dad and the other is Mom. And she is still here as a supporting tower, as she has always been throughout the years. Absence has always been a part of our lives. When Dad was working hard in Jamaica, she was there. When he was in Suriname, she was there. When he was in Denmark and England and wherever, she was there working hard also, manning the ship for 60 years. She has not given up and she is still here. Thank you, Mom. This tribute is for him and at the same time for her. It has always been teamwork and the family wouldn't have worked without the support of each other. The saying is that, we know it so well, behind every good man is a good woman. And throughout the years, even though it seemed that one has fallen, the branch will not break. It does not know how to break. We will continue to blossom and to bear fruit. Personally, I've seen Dad languishing in that hospital, and it was a hard sight to behold day after day, and on top of that, to send reports to Andre and Chauvin. But it says in Isaiah 57, the righteous perishes, and no man lays it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He enters into his rest. The world is changing fast, and we are living in a virtual prison, an evil world, and we wonder what is next beyond the mask. For Dad, it was never a dull moment. For Dad, it could have been better, but it could have been worse. <laughs> we can take his advice, as he used to say, why worry, you know? Or as he would say, oh la la, oh la la. <laughs> These are some of, his, of the expressions that he would voice. He used to say to me, boy, take care of your eyes. Go and get it checked. You can't buy them in the market, all right? So, but these saints will stay with us, you know. We will remember them. But before I go, I, I want to share something that has left a lasting memory in my mind. <laughs> Which I found to It has left a lasting memory in my mind. And even though 
I was not involved in the matter directly. Years ago, Dad had imported a vehicle from Japan, brand new. One of his colleagues from Europe was due to come into the country, and because he wasn't well, he asked Mr. Andre on his birthday to go and pick him up for him. So Andre went with this brand new car and crashed it before he reached the airport and wrote it off. To cut a long story short, I had to go up with Dad to pick up Andre, and Andre's foot was damaged, broken. And all he was worrying about was the car. Well, Dad said to him, you can always buy another car, but you can't buy another life. I was so impressed by that statement that it still lingers in my mind today. There are many more I can cite, but this is how I will end. I will always love my father. <laughs> I will miss him. <laughs> uh, I will never die. So, this in a nutshell, is George Ignatius de Pina. May Yahweh bless him. I just want to read a, a last scripture. <laughs> From Revelation 21, 4 and 5, which states, And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. The first things are passed away, and he that sat, sits on the throne, behold, I make all things new. And he says, write, for these words are faithful and true. Thank you. I know we have a song, um, Eyes on the Sparrow, but, but, but just before this, let us, um, let us do something. If you know the words of the song, Jesus Breaks Every Fetter, just sing it with me. If you don't know it, just bow your heads. And as we ask God in his might, in his wisdom to just be with with us as we celebrate. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter and set me free Jesus breaks every fetter Jesus breaks Jesus breaks every fetter and set me free. And yes, the eyes of the sparrow.
Auntie Leela, Uncle Ken, Andre, Shireen. Just want to bring you my love from Arlette, Stacia, and myself. My dear friends, please stand and let us pray. O oh God, in whom 
come sinners find mercy and saints find joy. We pray to you today for our brother George, whose body we will honor with Christian burial, that he may be delivered from the bounds of death. Admit him now to the joyful company of your saints and raise him up on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Can we please sit as we listen to the readings? The first reading. Good morning, everyone. I am Shavane George's daughter. The sunshine of his eyes, his barber called me and gave me such stories that dad used to tell of me. So he knew me without even knowing me. So I'm going to do the first reading. It's from Ecclesiastes. Uh, 3 verses 1 through 6. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter on the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pick up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. Daddy, you're not here. We're going to miss you. But so many loving memories I have of you, with you. You are my everything. You are my everything, and you know that. And I will keep those memories, hold on to them, cherish them. And I hope I made you proud. <laughs> but you're always in my heart, and I'll carry that with me. And as a response to the first reading, we sing Psalm 23. Again, it is the Cremon, but we'll just, I'll just change the melody a little so we could have some a bit tempo. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the paths of righteousness, yea, for his own name's sake. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives. Yet will I fear no ill, for thou art with me and thy rod and staff me comfort still. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my redeemer. 
lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou thus with foil anoint, and my cup overflows. He lives, lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives. I know. Now listen to the second reading. Good morning, everyone. Um, I will be reading from Romans 8, verse 31 to 39. What then shall we say to these things if Yahweh is for us, who is against us? He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him give us freely all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of Yahweh's elect? It is Yahweh who justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is the Messiah, Yahshua, that died. Yes, rather, who was raised from the dead? Who is at the right hand of Yahweh? Who also make intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of the Messiah? Shall tribulation, or anguish, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Even as it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We were counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuading that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, but nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in the Messiah, Yahshua, our Master. Amen. I just want to take my time to celebrate the life of Gampa in my very own short way. I just want to thank him for all the lessons, the opportunities, the motivation that he has given me as a grandson, and by extension, grandma. I would like to thank you very much. He will forever be my mommy, and I will forever be in debt to him, because certain things he really didn't have to do for me, and he did it. So words cannot express how much I really miss him. And I hope you stay in my heart forever. Thank you, everyone. My friends, please stand for a proclamation of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and I will raise him up on the last day. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Alleluia. Just before I read the gospel, Shivani, I beg you to grant me one favor. Can I just change the gospel from John to Matthew? And I'll, you'll see why when I preach. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. And I'll read to you from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through to 46. And I will use the Jerusalem Bible translation. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. He will gather the nations before him, and he will separate people, one from another, just as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then he will say to those on his right, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you made me welcome. Naked, you clothed me. Sick, you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then they will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and made you welcome, naked and clothed you, sick and visited you, in prison and came to see you? He will say to them in reply, I tell you most solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you, do, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Go away from me with your curse upon you to the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me drink. I was a stranger, you never made me welcome. Naked, you never clothed me. Sick and in prison and you never visited me. It will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? He will say to them in reply, I tell you most solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this, to one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you neglected to do it to me. They will go off to eternal punishment but the virtuous to eat in a life. My friends, this is good news. It is a gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit for a few minutes. My friends, this morning, as we come together to celebrate George's life, we come together with mixed emotions. We come together with thanksgiving. In thanksgiving, we come together with sorrow and in sorrow. We come together with certainly more questions than answers. But my friends, in all of this, we come together to give thanks to God. We come to give thanks for George's life. Let me from the onset say 
and make a statement that I believe to be true. And the statement is this. Funeral services are not for the dead. The dead is dead and gone, and I say that with all sympathies. But funeral services are for the living. It is for you and for me that are left behind. Funeral services are moment in time, fleeting though those moments may be, that you and I, we have a chance to look at our lives again. We have a chance to examine our lives. We have a chance to ask the question that Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastical, Ecclesiastes reminds us of. Solomon reminds us that there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. And the question might be for us, friends, what time is it for us now? What time is it? There was a popular calypso by one of our Calypsonians, and we only had to answer to the chorus when he asked, what is the time, Mr. Wolf? We, we would all say, bacchanal time. But the time today is not bacchanal time. The time today is a time where you and I as I said, ought to take stock of our lives. What in our lives we need to change? What in our lives we need to do better? Because the truth be told, our brother George is gone, and we have to examine our lives. We have to change our lives. And there comes the gospel reading. The gospel reading is from Matthew. And I say to people, there are two things that you could say. Either Jesus is one of the greatest teachers of, of all times, which I believe he is, or he is a teacher that is really foolish. Because he is going to give you an exam at the end of time. And that exam will determine where you are or where you go, but it gives you all the questions. You just have to do it. What will determine where we end up in our lives? My friends, let me tell you a few things that will not determine that. It will not be, t it will not be determined by what religion we belong to. Whether you are Catholic, Anglican, Presbyterian, name the religion, at the last moment, that will not matter. It will not matter when did you go to church either. But what will matter is what is in Matthew. When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me drink? When I was a stranger, did you make me welcome? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick and in prison, did you visit did you visited me? George did all of that in his life. Andre, remember the family that went to Guyana? when they started, uh, went to the CYO, and George willingly took them in. When I was a stranger, you made me welcome. 
In taking that family in, George was taking in the Lord himself. Because God comes to us incognito. We don't very often recognize him without eyes of faith. When I was hungry, did you feed me? As a trade unionist, George must have fed many, many hungry mouths. And he was doing it, and the persons he, would, he was doing it for was not just the persons in front of him, but he was doing it for God because God comes to us incognito. We have to have eyes of faith to recognize him. Can you imagine what it is that your, your, your bread line, your, is, your whole livelihood is on the line? You are going to be fired and there is somebody that is standing in the gap between you being fired and you having bread to eat. When I was thirsty, did you give me drink? My friends, there are a variety of thirsts. A variety of thirsts. Yes, we thirst for water. But there is an equal thirst for justice. There is an equal thirst for equity. George, in his life, gave drink to those persons who thirst for justice. He did that in his life. And while George was doing that, may I remind you, he was quenching the thirst of God who thirsts so very often for justice. When I thirst, did you give me drink? When I was naked, did you clothe me? My friends, about two years ago, there was a terrible scene that came on social media. A lady was driving a Hilux somewhere in the vicinity of the um, Hazley Crawford Stadium, banged the um, high, the vehicle on the um, pavement, stripped herself naked, and walked down the road from um, Hazley Crawford going towards Power Gen. And you know what angered me? There were so many people, onlookers, seeing what happened took off their, sm their smartphones, you see that smartphone? And click, 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 taking pictures of the lady and sending it out. My friends, they made the lady more naked than she was naked. Can you imagine? When I was naked, did you clothe me? Nobody thought of taking something and clothing the woman, but rather, all they could do is to send her naked picture all over the place. George, George clove so many people that were naked, and not naked in the physical sense. My friends, this, this is what gets us to heaven. This is what determines where we go. And there are times I say to Christians of all denominations that Christians these days, you get me vex. Even I, as a Christian, I get myself vex at times. Because you know what? We talk the talk. We don't walk the walk. Too many times we Christians, we are judgmental of others. And somebody might be saying, George was not going to church, and he was doing, not doing this, and he ain't going, and he going to hell. I, I often say they fast, you know, because nobody knows who's, who is going to heaven or who, or who is going to hell. But what we know, we have to do what God asks of us. 
and in doing it we will get there we will get to heaven if we do what God asks of us when I was hungry did you feed me when I was thirsty did you give me drink when I was a stranger did you make me welcome when I was naked did you clothe me when I was sick and in prison did you visit me and if you do that if we do that we are going to hear God say to us come you whom my father has blessed take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world and with that I will call it Gregor because I say George is my brother Can we all please stand and let us pray? I passed a um, paper with Psalm 27. So can we all pray Psalm 27? Together, the Lord. Let us pray together. Together, the Lord is my light and my strength. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers with his and your response after each intercession will be, Lord, graciously hear us. For in baptism, our brother George received the light of Christ Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our brother George was nourished at the table of the Savior, 
welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and are awaiting the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, hear us. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, hear us. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, hear us. This morning, we pray for George's wife. After a long, long marriage, long life together, it is hard to say au revoir. We pray for his children, grandchildren, many, many friends, comrades. Father, they too are seeking comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes with grief. Lord, hear us. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother George. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, hear us. Lord, At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, can we please sit? Dear friends, before we go our separate ways, may we take leave of our brother George, May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our faith, our hope. For one day we will greet George again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. For it is into your hands, Father of all mercies, that we commend the soul of our brother George, in the sure and certain hope, that together with all who have died with Christ, he will be raised up again on the last day, we give thanks for the blessings which you've bestowed upon George in this life. These, Lord, are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant George and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until, Lord, we all will meet with you and with our brother George forever. Very often I like to see musicians, and w whenever I see them, I put them to work. So the musician will play something for me while I bless the casket.
Let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, O oh Lord, to Thee. Should I gain any praise, let it go to Indeed, to God be the glory. My friends, we gather to commend the soul of George, our brother, to God, our Father, and to commit his body to the purifying fires, that it might return to ashes the element from which it was drawn. But it is in the spirit of faith, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death, that we raise our voices in song and in prayer. Because God has chosen to call George from this life to himself, we commit his body to the purifying fires. For my friends, we remember always that you and I, we are dust, we are ashes. It is from dust and ashes we come. It is to dust and ashes shall we all one day return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his own in glory. For he is reason, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother George to God, our Father, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise him up on the last day. My dear friends, please stand, bow your heads, and pray with me. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. Lord, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear us, your children, as we cry out to you in our need. Strengthen our faith in your goodness, in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto George, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And my friends, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, 
Keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and may he be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and may he give you peace. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. George, in paradisum, de ducant te anageli, in a tu adventu, su si pia termati res, e per ducant te, in a civitatem santam Jerusalem, Chorus Angelorum, Tetsu Shipiat, Et Com Lazaro. Quandam parpere eterna abias requiem. And we will ask our musician again to take us out with You Raise Me Up. Just before we go, on behalf of Clark and Batu, we would like to extend to you again our deepest sympathies and condolences and to those who are following us via live stream or media um, we thank you for taking the time to join us in celebrating the life of a Caribbean man a dad a husband but one who gave his life not just for Guyana and Trinidad but for CARICOM and the Caribbean countries as a whole. George, we thank you for your life. We thank you for your service. Rest in peace.
I, yeah, yeah. No, no, we'll, I'll, I'll say. We, we, are, we are about to um, take Mr. George for cremation. Um, I would probably ask the, the family to do something. The, we'll use the, this bouquet, the flower, and um, could we just take one and put in the casket, all family members, just take a flower and put in the casket. And again, as I said, we are not saying goodbye. We are saying au revoir until we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, God protect you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet again. Till we at Jesus' feet till we meet till we meet again God be with you till we meet again God be with you till we meet again by his counsel God protect you daily manna still provide you God be with you till we meet again till we meet till we meet again till we meet at Jesus feet till we meet till we meet again God be with you till we meet again <clears throat> sing the wondrous love of Jesus sing his mercies and his grace in that mansion bright and blessed is prepared for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. 
As we walk the pilgrim pathways, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Let us, let us go a little more local now because I'm very ecumenical. You know, I, I love the Baptist kind of song. It's nice. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. I am on my way, safe and sanctified. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. Move, Satan, move, let me pass. I am on my way, safe and sanctified. Move, Satan. <coughs> Children, come go to Zion with me. Children, come go to Zion with me. Zion bells are ringing. Happy children are singing. Children, come go to Zion with me. Zion with me. Children, come go to Zion with me. Zion with me. Children, come go to Zion with me. Zion bells are ringing, happy children are singing, children come go to Zion, Zion with me, children come go to Zion with me, Zion with me, children come go to Zion with me, Zion bells are ringing. Children are singing, children, come go to Zion with me. My friends, may the peace of God be with you. May the peace of God that passeth all understanding stay in your heart. And may you keep the faith because there is a time and season for everything. Winter comes, but oh, what a joyous time it is when spring begins. The flowers start blooming, the birds start singing. That this might be your winter. I want you to trust that spring is coming. Thank you, thank you, and have a good afternoon.